the minimum wage. As it stands today, the national minimum wage is 18,000 naira. What's happening with the national minimum wage, Ambrose? Well, I, I, I've always hold this opinion that the Nigerian Labor Congress and the labor, other labor unions in Nigeria are not fighting this uh, battle for the welfare of the Nigerian worker systematically. I, I think they, they are getting a lot of things mixed up. And they always come forward. In the last uh, ten, uh, 10 years or so, uh, we have seen them coming forward only the, during the time of elections to make the necessary noise. And after the election, they sit back again. Nothing happens. But when this call began, especially uh, when this committee was constituted, it was not election period. Are we talking about minimum wage or living wage? You see, proponents have said that we should be talking about a living wage and not a minimum wage. Because a living wage is that when you are paid your salary, no matter how much you are paid, that it can take you home, make you have a life, pay your bills, and still be able to uh, send your children to school, make your family eat, and live a comfortable life. There was a time in Nigeria where a car was costing just 1,500 naira. There was a time in Nigeria where the dollar was lower than the naira. That is where, how much was sal staff salary then? 1,000 something, 2,000 something. And people were living big. People were living well. So it is not how much you stack that is the problem. It is how the labor union is able to be used as a pressure group that it is to force some economic policies in Nigeria to make sure that the Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian worker earns a living wage. And how do you start that? First, as a pressure group, labor is not taking government to task. Labor has gone to sleep. They are not tackling government now. There are huge bills by political office holders. Some of them have 100, 1,000. I mean, the Cross River State Government announced 1,000 aids. Some governors, in fact, one governor did not sacked 300 and something uh, aids recently. And I was asking how many were there in all if 300 and something was sacked. So, and these people end on monthly basis. There are allowances by political, there are estacos, there are the, there's a um, security vote that we don't even know how much comes to the governors. Now, all these things are happening in a country where the uh, worker is wanting, earning a minimum wage of 18,000 naira. Even if you earn 50 something thousand naira, does that take you home? No. So the labor should be more proactive and systematic. One, by ensuring that the government, I mentioned uh, welfare packages, that are social security packages. For example, the housing fund. For example, the, the uh, insurance, health insurance funds and other packages that were supposed to make sure to pass as palliatives. How many people are paying them? Now, the same labor union, so many state governors have not paid salaries, which is even the basic, the 18,000 naira minimum wage you fought for. Many governors are not even pay, paying it. And yet, labor went to sleep. The governors are having budget given to them, a federal allocation monthly. They're having Paris money, uh, Paris club fund released to them. They're having other palliative, other intervention for giving to them to pay salary. Many of them did not pay. Governors are owing more than a year salary, 18 months, 16 months, 10 months. And yet, labor is there sitting down. Now, they come up on an election period to gain some relevance and say, oh, you must increase it so that to seem as if they are fighting for the worker. As far as I'm concerned, the labor union, as we have it right now, are not fighting for the Nigerian worker. They are just there in the mix and make some noise, get some recognition before election and let it go. But are you comfortable with the 18,000 naira that we currently have as minimum wage? We will not be comfortable with anything so far that there's hyperinflation in the economy, so far that the monies that are meant for, so for workers' welfare to bring down the cost of living in Nigeria is not done. Then, no matter how much you pay, because what happens is this. When you increase the minimum wage, labor, the government is the highest employer <coughs> of labor. When you increase the minimum wage, every other product shoots up. Therefore, you are matching it at that level. Therefore, there's no, so there's no, there's no, there's no palliative. There's nothing. All right, let's get uh, Samuel, Samuel's view on this. The minimum wage. The governors have been accused of uh, stalling the process. You see, there is no way you can be a friend as a cat, you become a friend with a rat. It's not going to be to your favor. The workers, the Nigerian Labor Congress at the state level have become and made themselves as a cat, a friend to the rat as the governor or government of the state. Therefore, they are not respected any longer. The governor can do anything they like with them. They can say they cannot pay. 
Why? I've been issue. Except recently, because I won't take it away from the Nigerian Labour Congress led by the, uh, my Ayuba friend uh, Ayuba. Uh, we have collaborated in many instances to put this comment on there, especially in the areas of electricity. And uh, well, I, I believe if they have contributed much more in, do, in other areas of daily living, some of these governors will not become larger than life by spending the money their state does not have to claim as security votes. Your state, your workers are not paid. Look at what happened in Ekiti, for example. Your workers are not paid. Not even we can even talk about Afusa in uh, in uh, Ocean State, but even in you know, in Ekiti, uh, 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 despite the the money and the relief money give to everybody, which was extended to that state, you are still owing as much as eight months across board. The secondary teacher, the primary teacher, the head, the university, and the civil servant. And yet, your whole salary does not stop. Your House of Assembly member salary does not stop. And the Nigerian Labour Congress claimed to be in existence in that state up to the time of the election. And even after election, the money has not yet been paid. Who is to blame for that misfortune? Now Labour is stepping up. Stepping, and one of the reasons... Why are, 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 are they stepping up? They are stepping up to... You see, it's a, it's a question of a roller coaster. You are stepping up to ask for more. Why even the little that you are supposed to be paid has not been paid? So when you ask for more, what will you now do? Yeah, they will sign paper and then you will now be counting again. The state are only 20 months, state are only 30 months. There are some states that will collapse under the bridges of a uh, of, uh, uh, minimum wage. So, what do you want the organized labor to do? To fold the your arms labor, and let the system the organized labor, the way labor it is? supposed to have been proactive before now. To the extent that there are some excessive funds being spent by the state government that are not supposed to be. There are so like I used to say this. Each time you see doctors went on strike, it is because that they want more money, either call allowance or this. You have never, I've never seen any of Nigerian professionals that are working with government that got that go on strike because of inf decaying infrastructure in where they work. Doctors, we only went on strike or go on strike because they are looking for increase in call allowance. They are looking for uh, doctors, this thing, and salary. Is Not entirely the that, they are even they working. The same work they are doing that they are collecting salary every month. Many of them are under work because the, the instrument they are supposed to use to work and to save life is not there. They have never gone on strike because of that. The same thing happened to Nigerian labor. They have never gone on strike because that the economy is not moving forward. They have never gone on strike because they have never engaged the government because some infrastructures are not in place. I am waiting for a day that the labor will say we are going on strike, we are tackling the government because the Ajakuta still are uh, still not working. I am waiting for a day that they will say the road that leads to the dual road that's supposed to have been finished for one year in by the expressway is taking seven years. Then because of that, workers are down too. That is only when I'm going to take them serious. All that right is then. only when the government itself will take them serious. That is when they will have for minimum wages and Nigerians will support them and say, okay. If you cannot give them, they we too will not let you work in your office. That is when the government of the state will realize that a, 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 a budgeting humongous amount of money that is not accountable as security vote, it is not necessary. If you are able to pay salary, you have little to, to, to use as security vote. Both you and Samuel seem uncomfortable with the way the organized labor has operated in Nigeria. Yeah, they have not operated well. At least in the last 10 years, they have just been sleeping. And um, I think uh, is all kinds of uh, is, uh, what they are doing now is shenaniganism. They are not serious about it. They just want to make some noise because election is coming. And then some people always, some people argue that I mean they want the governor, uh, the governors and the federal government to take notice so that they can be settled in court. So there's a lot of there are a lot of issues going on uh, here. If you cannot tackle this, in fact, the, the last month or early this month, um, the NUC, NLC uh, chairman in Oshun State was praising the governor to high heavens because he paid four months out of the outstanding was owing. And what a disgraceful, what, what kind of disgraceful statement and attitude is that? That's you are praising him for owing your, your workers. And so what then, should he have done? Where was he? 
Why would they be owing salaries for that? You have not shut down the Lagos, uh, the, the Oshun State Secretariat. Why should the governor still be going to work for only 16 months salary? How effective really is the whole shutting down thing? Because in Oshun State specifically, there are like two sets of pensioners. Your final set of pensioners come out, they barricade the government house, the secretariat and all that, and calling on government to pay their pension arrears. It's not even their function, it's not their work. And now there is another set of pensioners who would gather and say that the first those group pensioners? that, you know, th that first group has been sponsored are, are by those certain ones interests. Those ones pensioners, the second group that came, because no pensioner will go against his own uh, interest. And I think it's not even the work of the pensioners to do this. The NLC, the Nigerian Labour Congress and other labour unions are empowered by law to picket organisations, including the government organisations. So if government does not pay all the uh, infragrance uh, abuse of labour laws, the, the NLC and other labour unions have a right to picket that place. So I will, there will be labour unions in states and governors are owing so much uh, salaries and they have not picketed the uh, local government secretary, and picketed seem, the government house. We seem to have gotten to a point where it appears it is only strike, industrial action, downing of tools that uh, gets rest. The strike is not even more effective because the labour has sold out. The labour has sold out. Because there's no labour you know, that has not sold out that will sit down there and allow a state government or federal government to owe salaries of workers 10 months, 20 months down the line, 15 months. It's not done. So coming to what you talked about, that yes. uh, NLC should go ahead. Uh, where's NLC now? Or the lib organized labour because there's NLC yes. and there's the ULC. Should just go ahead and tackle this systematically. I mean, that price that proposes like 200% increase on the existing minimum wage. And remember, we're not just talking about the baseline minimum wage. As you're increasing minimum wage, you're going to increase everybody's salary almost with the same margin. Where are you going to get that money from? Where for a country that's just coming out of recession? I mean, NSC should just wake up. And then, reacting to what he said, mm -hmm. NSC, primary responsibility of NLC, forget every other thing they are doing. The primary responsibility of the labor unions is to ensure that their staff, uh, that the worker earns a living wage. And How do you define a living wage? A living wage is that any salary you pay me, I have the enabling environment, I have the infrastructure, I have other welfare packages that are supposed to be given to me by this government to ensure that I am living a decent life. So first of all, if, for example, the inflation rate is like maybe 1%, minimum 18,000 naira is, is, is a very comfortable minimum wage. If I can rent a house, uh, with uh, 1,000 naira for a year, these, are, these things were possible 30 years ago. So it's not as if we are saying things that are utopian. No. As of 1983-84, I mean, one US dollar to Nigeria was like one, one US dollar 50 cents to one naira. People were flying uh, to, uh, to London with, uh, with uh, uh, 700 naira. So what are we talking about? People were buying cars for 2,500 naira as of the, the mid-80s. So it's possible. So if we are buying, uh, if we, if this, if for example, somebody was earning three thousand naira as of nineteen eighty three, are we talking about eighteen thousand naira here? Three thousand naira was a lot of money. So it's first of all to ensure that push government, be a pressure group that will push government to make sure that policies are made, money, money is injected into infrastructure that will make sure that Nigeria is a good place to live. Our healthcare system, our education system, our road infrastructure, electricity, and all those things. The money is there. Nigeria has the financial capacity to make Nigeria an El Dorado. And if labor is the greatest pressure group, and if they cannot apply that pressure, then they are failed. So coming out to say labor does, what other thing is labor doing? Is it, a challenge, is it a challenge with the leadership of the organized labor, or uh, where exactly have we lost it? You see, the former president of Bansanjo was the one that balkanized labor and effectively crippled them. Because NLC, the Nigerian Labour Party, was a one monolithic labour pressure group that could bring government down to its knees. And they demonstrated it a lot. Uh, I mean, remember the time of ba Pascal Bafal and all those uh, labor by Modu in the 60s? And then currently, recently, the greatest noise in the recent times was made by uh, Comrade Adam Sushomole when he was a comrade, not now that he's a politician. So then you could see how he had a running battle with the then uh, president, Olusha Bobasanjo, and he was able to cripple the economy in many instances. So after that, I think the government learned a good lesson. And what did they do? They now started uh, allowing other uh, labor parties to come up. So TUC came up. Other, and then 
in the last uh, four or five years, what has happened was that they ensure that even the NLC, the way it stood, was now balkanized. You know, in the last election, we saw what happened. Uh, uh, other splinter groups uh, uh, sprang up. And uh, so labor has been decapitated. And now what has happened? So now they are just uh, errand boys for the governors, for the ministers. Nothing is happening. So it's all about, okay, that's why the governor can uh, not take them seriously. And that's why they cannot picket the government house. That's why they cannot picket secretariat. They cannot even picket uh, private uh, organizations. We have a lot of foreign companies that are treating Nigerians like a bunch of slaves in their factory, everywhere. Labor cannot do anything. So we, we have not got the acts together. So every other thing Labor is doing is inconsequential. It's not about every May 1st we start to you wear a uniform and do match past. Is that what we're talking about here? We're uh, talking about the welfare of Nigerian worker is not being taken care of by this current leadership of all the various uh, uh, labor unions.